Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're diving into the book of Proverbs, and hopefully this week we can uh, get into Proverbs and also the book of Ecclesiastes. When we look at the book of Proverbs, what was the purpose of Proverbs? What was the intent of the Holy Spirit to give us this book? I think that when we read chapter 1, the first seven verses, I think we kind of see what was the intent of the Holy Spirit in giving us the book of Proverbs, which is an incredible book. It is impossible to study the book of Proverbs and not increase in wisdom and knowledge and understanding and change our climate in our homes and our finances. It is a book that is an incredible book, short, witty sayings that we, we get from uh, Solomon, but powerful, powerful sentences, one sentence, and there's so much from it that we have to glean from it. But in Proverbs chapter 1, starting at verse 1, the Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel to understand a proverb and an interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. He kind of lays out what the whole book of Proverbs is about, uh, Solomon and, and his wisdom. And he tells us we're going to be talking about justice and judgment and equity and knowledge and wisdom and understanding and he says the purpose of the book is to give instruction to give instructions of wisdom uh, and also words of understanding to give subtlety to the simple to make the simple wise those that are young those that do not know uh, we're going to see in the book of proverbs that he gave many many proverbs and the powerful thing is that one proverb can change your life. And here in the book of Proverbs, we have hundreds of proverbs dealing with child rearing, dealing with finance, dealing with uh, discretion, dealing with beauty, dealing with sexual temptations. Uh, it is an incredible book. It is a book that touches every phase of our living. So he sets the stage for what we're going to talk about, and he says one thing here is the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. Now, he said it is the beginning of knowledge, and what he's talking about fear is not so much dread or torment, but a reverence, a respect for God. When we begin to respect God and the knowledge of God, we will begin to hear what God has said to us, and we will live. And the one thing the book of Proverbs teaches us that uh, as it personifies wisdom as a female, wisdom and understanding, one thing it says if we embrace wisdom, embrace understanding, we will live. I want to dive into, I want to dive into some of the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 3, which is a very powerful chapter. And if we look at chapter 3 and let us start at verse number five trust in the lord with all thine heart lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path so these two verses are very powerful verses they say to us he says trust in the lord with all your heart and what he's implying is that we must walk by faith Romans says it clear paul says it in the book of Romans. we got to walk by faith because if we don't walk by faith, we're going to walk by sight. When he says, lean not to your understanding, not the way we see it, not the way we perceive it, not the way we think it's going to come out, but we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart. How do we do that? We trust his word. We trust what the word says. When we don't see it, 
we trust the word of God because it's impossible for God to lie. He says now you acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. What an incredible promise. I don't know if we see this as a promise that God has given us, but it is an incredible promise to keep us out of trouble, keep us out of hell, to keep us out of the grave, to keep us out of debt, to keep us out of divorce. Uh, Incredible promise. God is saying to us that if you will ask me, you acknowledge me, I'll give you direction. Now, I was talking talking to many people. When I talked to them, they said, I prayed about it. And I say, what what did God say? And there's no answer. And I think what we sometimes do, we want to do something. We say, Lord, I want to do this, and we pray, and then we just do it. That is not what he's talking about. He is saying that we are to acknowledge him. We are to seek God. We are to seek God concerning his word. What does the word of God say on the decision I'm getting ready to make? There's some things you don't have to you don't have to seek God about. We don't have to seek God about uh, sin. If it's sin, we don't have to ask God, can we do it? Uh, it says he will give us direction. Acknowledge God. He will give us direction. And that means in order to get the directions, we, we ask. We just can't leave before we receive the direction. So prayer is not just, a, prayer is not just uh, us asking, but it's also waiting to hear from God. God knows how powerful a decision or a choice can impact our lives. A decision, one choice, can impact our lives in a great way or in a negative way. It can be positive or negative. So that's why he said, just come to me and ask me, and I'll show you what to do. And the reason why we need to do this is because we don't know what's going to happen on tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen on the next day. And we just can't judge everything based on the day. You know, many times people uh, get married without acknowledging God. Well, it's important to acknowledge God because he's um, um, omniscient. He knows everything. He knows what the person is going to be like 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Not just that. He knows what we're going to be like five years from now. Something that we don't even know. We don't know what we're going to be like five years from now, 10 years from now. Because we're not, we're not omniscient. God is. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in actsministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, Text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So he tells us that we are to acknowledge him and be not wise in our own eyes. Do not think that we have it so together, so together, that we can do our own thing and 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 still be in good favor with God or do our own thing and and everything will just fall in place and everything will be great and everybody will be happy. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that at all. We have to acknowledge him. And if we acknowledge him, then he will give us a direction on which way to go. That is so powerful. I can ask him, what an advisor we have, what a consultant we have, if we allow God to be our consultant. Very powerful uh, verses in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3, he says something to us, and this is going to be one of the themes, and this is to give wisdom to the simple wisdom to the young he says for the lips of a strange woman drop as honeycomb her mouth is smoother than oil and this is a precursor of some of the things that Solomon is going to talk about and Solomon knew this firsthand he knew it firsthand because because he experienced how devastating it can be 
to allow your flesh to just go the way it wants to go. You know, Solomon ended up with a thousand women, concubines and wives, 1,000 in all. And he got off track because he began to allow, began to allow those that he was involved with to dictate his worship. And that should never, ever happen. But to Solomon, with Solomon, it did happen. It did happen. So he has some incredible advice to give to all of us concerning the sin that the Bible says is the only mm-hmm. sin that we do that is against the body. It is the only sin. It is a sin that is in a category by itself, and that is sexual sins. In Proverbs chapter 8, and look at verse 11, verse 12, it says, For wisdom is better, I should you see that, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So he's telling us that wisdom, wisdom, we need, we need, we need the wisdom of God to help us. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. And without wisdom, we will not attain to what God wants us to have. In Proverbs chapter 13, some more wisdom he give us. And I'm going to come back because one of these chapters is very long. And I'm going to try to attack that on tomorrow. But, but in Proverbs 13 and verse number 12, some more, some more wisdom he gives us. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And what this proverb speaks about is disappointments in our lives. When there is an expectation of receiving something and it is denied or it is not received, he says it makes the heart sick. Now the heart he's talking about here is not the physical heart. He's talking about he's talking about the very essence of who we are. He's talking about that invisible part of us that is eternal. He said it makes it sick. And that's what happens in many of our emotions. We're sick. We're, we're sick in our emotions, emotionally sick, emotionally sick. It's not a physical thing. It, it, it dumps into the physical body, but it started in the emotions. And he's given us one of the reasons why this happens, because hope deferred. When I don't get it, when I want to get it, if I'm not careful, it will pollute, corrupt my heart if I don't allow the word of God to come. If I don't allow the word of God to come and to help me, if I don't have faith to believe that that he's not going to deny me of what he promised me. When I have faith to believe that because it didn't come when I wanted to come, it didn't come the day I thought it was going to happen, but it's going to happen because God said it, then it strengthens me. He says, now when that desire cometh, it's a tree of life. It's, it's excitement. It's fulfillment. But waiting until it comes to pass. Waiting patiently. So just in Proverbs chapter 12, in between the, in between the first phrase and, and the second sentence, there is a wait. There is a wait. And we have to be willing to wait or we'll give up in the wait. In our patience, the Bible says, possess we our souls. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.